Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. This is it. This is the last N-Series blaster that I have picked up at this point, thus completing the launch of N-Series. And from this point forwards, I finally get to make the retrospective. If you guys are wondering why the Sprinter isn't here, it's because I'm seriously, seriously thinking that it just isn't going to come out in the U.S. because it has come out weeks ago in every single other country that supplies Nerf blasters at all, and everywhere else, genuinely everywhere else, already has the blaster and right now i am in the process of having one of my friends who lives out there getting a sprinter and having it sent here so that i can get one for a review it's wild but for right now this is the last blaster to take a look at with n series and if you guys are wondering why it took me this long to review the pinpoint it's because this is how long it's taken me to test the blaster because this is the magazine it comes with. It's proprietary, and they only give you one. Which means, testing takes forever. But luckily, we're here now, and I can finally talk about this blaster. Let's get into it. So the Pinpoint is a 2024 release out of N-Series. I've said that so many times, it's burned into my brain. And this blaster is arguably the most important that has come out so far, because this is the Springer primary of the N-Series line. Yeah, you can argue the Infinite, but I would class that more as a heavy gunner blaster. This is a mag-fed, bolt-action primary. And it is the new long shot. They're doing a new long shot. How does this one compare to the long shot? Let's start with the design and find out. So the design of this blaster, I don't like it. <laughs> that's, that's coming from someone who really likes all the N series blasters. This one is the weakest for me to look at. And that's me saying that subjectively because let's look at the design objectively first. It is a very aesthetically interesting design. There is a lot of detail. Look at this barrel. Look at all these interesting lines and stuff. I think this line right here is just really nice to look at. The way the scope kind of turns into the blaster, which also turns into the barrel, and it's just all kind of like kept together in this one very swift movement where it's just like a wave. It's a very interesting and cool looking design. And I think that the white up here also adds a little bit of extra touch to it. It's honestly a really nicely designed blaster in terms of the color scheme and in terms of the way that like the little lines and stuff go together but it's the shape that's throwing me off because the whole front end of this blaster is like a big like it looks almost like a plasma rifle like let's put my arm up here look at the blaster just forwards it looks huge it looks like it should be some kind of big primary but then look at it from here back it looks tiny. It looks like a pistol with a stock on it. And that's the problem. This blaster is having an identity crisis right here in the middle. The front of it is super big and the back of it is tiny. It has this super small stock that is also super short and it just doesn't fit at all. The lack of a trigger guard, similarly to what the long shot did, seems like it should make the design look more interesting, but it just makes it look cheap and bland. The lack of the foregrip doesn't help much either. I get that you're supposed to put your hand right here but like it seems like there should be a foregrip on something that is like meant to be the big primary and there just isn't one there isn't even a rail down here for you to have a foregrip on not to mention the whole area back here is just a mess where is the cheek rest where is your supposed to go i just put my face here but it's just a cramping and weird feeling it doesn't make any sense the way that this blaster is put together as a design makes zero sense and we gotta talk about the plastic quality because the plastic quality makes this design 10 times worse. The barrel right here is really nicely done. It feels like an end strike product, but the blaster does not. The blaster feels like something from Elite 2.0 to the point where you can see the difference. Look, you can literally see the difference where the blaster connects to the barrel. And there's even even more difference like up here. You can kind of see the internals in there. Look, those are the internals that are peeking through the plastic because the plastic is thin. Like throughout the middle of this blaster, it feels 
thin, I can squeeze the plastic in. It doesn't feel good at all. Back here feels okay, like the blue feels just fine, the barrel feels just fine, and the white feels just fine. But all this orange in the middle feels like crap. What is going on? What is going on? I don't understand what is happening with N-Series and plastic quality because every single blaster, every single one is made differently in terms of plastic quality. This one is the most offensive out of all of them because two thirds of the blaster feels really good and then one third, the main portion of the blaster that makes up the body does not feel good. It feels bad. What is happening? I will address this more in my series retrospective, but my god, I have a lot to say about plastic quality with N-Series. So what about the ergonomics? This blaster features a main grip, kind of a foregrip, a stock, and a kind of a cheek rest. The main grip is really, really comfortable. I would argue it's one of the better N-Series grips. This one fits this blaster very nicely, though it does seem on the smaller side. I mean, it fits the blaster aesthetically because the blaster really isn't big, but it just seems like a primary like this should have a bigger grip. It's nothing to write home about. It certainly isn't uncomfortable. As for the foregrip, putting your hand right here is a very nice experience. This whole area is very smooth and you can just put your hand right there. And surprisingly enough, even though it's flat and just has these chamfered edges right here, it kind of perfectly lines up with your knuckles and provides a really comfortable experience for your hand. So no real complaints there. As for the stock, it's very short and it definitely could be longer, but it's overall pretty nicely done and it feels all right to brace against your shoulder. It's not insultingly bad, what I'm saying. It's, it's all right. It's not too short. And putting your face here for a cheek rest feels really cramping. I don't really like shouldering this blaster and putting my face here like this because it just feels like something is wrong and that doesn't really help because the scope only has one reticle so there's no real reason to try and aim. So how does this blaster work? Well it is a magazine fed bolt action springer. So you take your mag, you put it in, you pull the bolt back, you push the bolt forward and you can fire once and it does not have slam fire. Now we need to talk about this magazine for a moment because it is the new standard magazine that Hasbro will be providing with N-Series blasters from this point forwards and it is definitely worth talking about. Now, this magazine looks similar to an old N-Strike mag, but the top is completely flat and there's a thing sticking out, which is actually the spring. And that is because this magazine actually copies the Ultra Speeds mag style. If you remember the Ultra Speed mag, it has a pressure clip which keeps the darts fitted, which is essentially just a recreation of a rival mag meant to fit darts. But this magazine is actually a heavy improvement over the Ultra Speeds magazine. First of all, the pressure clips are now on both sides, which means that the dart is fit in the middle and is no longer being pushed to the right, like on the ultra speed. This means that you'll have a perfectly centered dart fit every single time, which is very important because darts being pushed to the left, especially in springers, leads to jams. I should know, because I had to put up with blasters that jam all the freaking time. And most of the time, it just comes down to the darts not being centered properly. As well as a design choice that I personally was really worried about when I first saw it, because I thought it was gonna be like, oh God, they're gonna change this on every blaster and make them all have proprietary mags. No, as you can see, the magazine is slightly slanted forwards the way it connects to the mag well. And this makes it very, very easy to line up. As you look at what direction the magwell is facing, and it'll line up perfectly every single time. No more will you accidentally put your mags in backwards because you can tell just by looking at it when a mag is being held the wrong way. It lines up really weirdly and it just doesn't make any sense at all. When you hold it properly, it makes a lot more sense. So honestly, I'd say this mag is a heavy improvement over most standard mags except for the big oversight that the Ultra Speed had, and this one has as well. You put your mag in, you take your mag out, and a dart goes flying away because this blaster just disengages the pressure clips when you put it in the blaster, which means there's nothing keeping the darts from leaving the game. And that makes sense, but it is an oversight on Hasbro's part because they had the Ultra Speed to think about that before they permanently switched to this mag design. Now, is that a fair trade-off to mags jamming? Because this mag never jams. I've never had any jams with this magazine. I don't know if it is just this magazine or if every magazine just is made perfectly or if this design is superior or what, because I haven't gotten to test it much, but it is an improvement over the reliability on most regular magazines. And I'm inclined to believe that the pressure clip system is to do with that. And honestly, 
I don't really find myself taking the mag out of blasters that much unless it's to check how many darts I have, and this mag is painted clear, so you can figure that out anyways. Either way, let's take a look at the smoothness of operation. Pulling the bolt back and pushing the bolt forwards is not very pleasant. It's really clicky, and not in a good way. There's a loud snap when you hit the forward position, and a weird click when you hit the back position, and it just doesn't feel smooth or refined like the long shot. As for the trigger pull, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it definitely could be better. I am furiously confident that this is a plastic spring, which sucks because the Infinite didn't use a plastic spring. Why does this one? I don't know if it's a plastic spring, so don't take that as fact. I will open this blaster later and see if it has a plastic spring, but I just wanted to get this review out first. And then we get to the mag release. Oh, oh. It's perfect in every way. It's a paddle style. It's very comfortable. It's smooth and filleted. It has a nice metal spring and a super satisfying pop to it when you pull it in. It is wonderful. I love the mag release a lot. And the mag insertion is just as good. It's so smooth and so satisfyingly clicky. It feels like putting a mag in a well-lubricated strife. It's a really really nice mag setup that they've got going on here. Let's see this thing fire. To the fact that I only have one magazine, I'm going to condense this firing demo a lot. I hope you guys can forgive me. Oh my gosh. Oh, perfect. So what mod potential does the pinpoint have? Well, it's basically a retaliator mechanism with a bolt action. So if you can think it, you can probably do it with this blaster. I don't see much limitation to what you can do with the pinpoint at all. So would I recommend this blaster? I, no, I don't really think so. This blaster is weird and it just confuses the crap out of me. It is using proprietary magazines. That's the first big problem. The second big problem is the fact that the blaster is having an identity crisis because it seems like it's simultaneously trying to be a big sniper rifle like the Centurion and be a compact blaster like the Retaliator or the Recon. And because it seems to be like switching between what it's trying to do halfway through the blaster, it just doesn't work as either of them. It doesn't really work as a big primary because it's so small and cramping, and it doesn't work as a small compact CQB blaster because the barrel is so freakishly big, and you can't even remove the barrel. Once the barrel's on, you can't take it off, and I've heard that it's really difficult to get it off even if you open the blaster and try to remove it manually. It's a really weird blaster, and I just don't know what to think about it at all. Not to mention, it's completely pointless completely and utterly pointless because the infinite exists. Y'all gotta understand the way that these darts fire. Sometimes they fly perfectly straight for a super long time, but more often than not, they will pick a slight variation in direction somewhere between like 0.1 and 0.5 degrees away from exactly where you're aiming it and just stick to it. So you will get a spread with this blaster holding it perfectly still that is similar to that of a shotgun. And the problem with that is that this is meant to be some kind of precision sniper thing that you would put out one shot at a time and be accurate with. But because of the way that N-series darts travel through the air, there's no reason to do that. It's like having a single shot rival blaster, like sniper rival blaster. Oh. So that's why they never did it again. N-series darts work because they're slightly chaotic and they just kind of go all over the place, but they still go where you're aiming them. I say that as an improvement to elite darts because elite darts just went wherever they wanted. These darts, yes, they do vary. They do vary between like perfectly straight. They go a little bit to the side, but they pick a direction and stick to it. So where you see a dart going, that's where it's gonna go. And that works for being something like a heavy gunner blaster, like the, like the infinite, because you can just smash out darts like constantly and do cover fire. That's why the Prometheus works, because rival rounds have the same properties. Once they pick a direction, they just keep going in that same direction for a really long time. They don't shoot perfectly straight, but they shoot straight in the direction that they're going in. That's how N-series darts work, and that's why single shot blasters like this 
don't really work, especially without slam fire. That went on for quite a while, but if you do want to pick this blaster up, I will link it in the description below. Thank you for watching. Bye.